I don't know how easy or how hard it's going to be for Everton, but I don't know what's your take. Everton, Manchester United. I think it's going to be very hard for Everton, given that, uh, you know, in their last game, they lost, you know, two of their central defenders, Funes Morris, to a very stupid red card, and, of course, they lost John Stones to an injury. And with Manchester United's young strike force, I don't think uh, they'll survive their onslaught. History? History, I think history is there to be broken. We saw it uh, between Chelsea and Swansea. Chelsea were beaten for the first time. And I think money will come out on top. I, I, I don't know, Kenya, if you agree, Manchester United will come up on top. Uh, it's, it's a difficult call, call uh, because, first of all, you have two teams that have already met in the league and Manchester United, you know, taking all the bragging rights in the, in the, in the league. And now you have a game in the FA that is crucial to both teams. Both team, teams are looking for silverware. Manchester United has been awful this season. Everton the same. And having, having in mind that you know United has uh, gotten the two wins in the league, Everton will come out, you know, full force. They have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they know that in the league, the best they can finish is eighth, eighth position. They are currently 11th. Manchester United, uh, as Van Gaal said, he, he will not be uh, resting any player. And as it is in history, or, you know, you, you look at uh, many teams that uh, you have more than two games in a, when you meet more than two, two, three times in a season, uh, it is not going to be one-sided. Uh, an example, Arsenal, when they played uh, Watford. First, 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 in the league, Arsenal had it easy. But when it came to the FA, they thought it's going to be that way. Watford secured a win. Then afterwards, again in the league, Arsenal secured a win. We've seen that uh, in, in many cases. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not going to be easy for Manchester United. So United Although will I, fancy, have a United... I fancy chances for United, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be easy. I don't know, Eric, if you agree on uh, what they're saying. Well, uh, probably there are be better experts in this. <laughs> I'm more of an expert in sponsorships here. So, but but yeah. what's your take? United, Everton? Um, United. <laughs> <laughs> United, but it doesn't seem to be like a Manchester United fan. But you're going to be also having different English Premier League ties that are uh, scheduled for today. Very, very impressively because teams are just uh, trying to see how well they're going to be securing their final uh, victories when it comes to matters to do with the EPL title chase. And Manchester City... Very, very impressive. We've seen what De Bruyne has been doing after he came back from injury. He will be up against Stoke City. Southampton will be up against Aston Villa. Aston Villa, huh, their season is gone. So this time around, maybe they'll just want to spoil the party for Southampton. But we're going to see how that uh, goes to that. Chelsea on the other side will be uh, taking uh, bon, uh, Bournemouth. Liverpool against Newcastle. Liverpool against Newcastle. I think Liverpool has, has proved that they have what it takes to dance with the big guns when it comes to matters next season. You agree on that? I, I think Liverpool will be a big force to reckon with next season. And mm -hmm. it's going to be a very difficult season for the big, uh, the so-called traditional big teams. Because mm -hmm. Liverpool has been on the periphery, mm -hmm. but it seems like they're coming back. It seems like they're coming up. Yeah. So uh, these are some of the matches that are scheduled for today. But also tomorrow, very, very impressive teams are trying to see how well they're going to be, to be taking. Leicester City, very, very impressive, up against Swansea. And for the first time, Claudio Ranieri said that we're going to take this title, okay? Uh Claudio Ranieri, you know, I, I think his counting is... Uh, chicks before the eggs uh, hatch. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is the scenario. Leicester are here to play Manchester United mm -hmm. and Chelsea away. Mm -hmm. They are not going to be playing at home. Mm -hmm. Swansea, they, I, they fancy their chances against Swansea, but they are playing Manchester United away mm -hmm. and Chelsea away. Manchester United is seeking a top four position. It's not going to, uh, to be a walkover for Le Leicester. Mm -hmm. And you compare the fixtures that Leicester has at the moment and you look at the le fixtures that Tottenham has at the moment, mm -hmm. Tottenham, uh, you could say, has an easy ride. With the five points adrift? So With the five points adrift. If, if Leicester loses against Manchester United and uh, Chelsea, mm -hmm. and then Tottenham have... I think an easy way of winning the, the, the title. Maybe with one point better. With one I... point better than Leicester. So, but uh, we've seen what Leicester has done this season uh, to the big teams. That is apart from Arsenal, which is the only big team that took uh, six points from, from Leicester. So mm -hmm. I, I still find it uh, difficult for Leicester to get points from Chelsea and Manchester United, which is the, the next game. Mm -hmm. But uh, trust uh, Claudio Ranieri to do something. I'm a Manchester United fan, but somehow, somehow I want Manchester United to lose against 
Leicester, so that Leicester will win this. I, I don't know, but let's wait and see. Arsenal will be up against Sunderland, so another crucial tie for Arsenal. They've been struggling. Remember, by the end of last year, they were topping the table. Things turned, as they always do. Uh, well, I think it's a tough game because <laughs> Sunderland is fighting relegation, so it's going to be hard for Arsenal. Mm -hmm. But let me come back to Leicester. I think uh, what Claudio Ranieri has done mm -hmm. is relatively dangerous in the sense that I think they're going to be under pressure right now. The mm -hmm. players will now be under pressure that now our manager expects us to win the league. Mm -hmm. Remember, I mean, it, it's as easy as he should have just kept quiet and told them, win two games, don't lose the, the, the last two. Mm. That's it, you win the league. Mm. But right now, I think it's going to be difficult. I mean, you'll try to prove your manager right mm. and you put yourself under unnecessary pressure. Maybe that's how it's going to be. But he was saying that they will dream, they will dream, the dream is on, they'll keep on dreaming. But this time around, they're saying they will win that uh, title. Champions League, for sure, they're going to be taking part next season. But matters to do with uh, uh, the title, Let's wait and see if they're going to be securing it. But matters to local football. One impressive side this season has been uh, the City Stars, Nairobi City Stars. Remember, last season they missed relegation by just two points after having finished uh, 14th and KCB went uh, uh, adrift. So they are there. They have been struggling. But with the new tactician, and this is Bobby Ogola, the side actually have some energy. Right now they're 12th. And uh, the coach is saying maybe they're going to finish top 10. But how realistic is that dream for them? Take a look, City Stars. For a period of four years, City Stars have been running around the relegation zone and a late surge in 2015 made them survive by a whisker. This season, things could change, especially with the arrival of former Gurumahia tactician John Bobby Ogola, who has brought new life to the team. Ile mambo ya kuitwa team ya relegation, hiyo, 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 hiyo nafikini shatawa. Hiyo ishatoka. Sabu ni game ya tisa, na tuko namba kumna mbili. And about the game, the back is in Namoja. City Stars is the only team to have beaten league leaders Madara United and 13 time champions AFC Lepers, but two defeats in a row have seen them drop to familiar territory. After collecting nine points from nine fixtures, Stars lie 12 on the KPL log. But what we achieve may be target here to come out as a Maliza top five first leg. I think Takua Takua Poa. Despite the challenges, Bobby Ogola is adamant that his side will do well this season. The last time Bobby Ogola was in charge of City Stars was in 2008 when he guided the team to position 6, their best ever finish in the Kenya Premier League. Bobby Ogola's charges will face struggling sofa packer this weekend as they seek to get back to winning ways. Other matches will see Gormahia take on Sony Sugar, Kakamega Homeboys will entertain Thika United, and AFC Leopards will lock horns with Ulinzi Stars. Abula Ahmed. KTN Sports. Thank you, Bula Ahmed, for just uh, that piece. But uh, there will also be other matches, just as you've, we've uh, seen there. But very, very impressive. City Stars, uh, Bobby has uh, transformed that side. He was there for the Gormaya as a side for a number of years. And he knows what Gormaya used, the trick Gormaya used so as to win that title. So maybe uh, City Stars, very, very impressive. We've seen what they've been doing in their early uh, opening matches of the league. But uh, things might uh, uh, turn sour and uh, maybe things might change. It's never that made when it comes to matters of football. Homeboys, Kakamega Homeboys. Remember a side that uh, came from uh, the uh, lower division will be up against uh, Thicker United. They've also had their moments in the, the league, but uh, against Thicker United, we don't know actually what will transpire by that side, but not that easy a tie should it be. Yushuru will be up against Chamilil. Uh, Yushuru have been struggling, comparing it uh, with what they did last season. For me, this season, it has not been that merry for them, so uh, they need to up. Uh, they play Western Steamer against Bandari. Bandari is a side that uh, the last second half edition of the Kenya Premier League, they were very, very impressive trying within. And remember, uh, their defender, that is Mohamed, won the uh, uh, Football Player of the Month award. That is for uh, last month or so. Maybe he'll have what he takes to manage his uh, uh, back line there uh, against uh, Western Steamer. FC Leopards against Ulinzi Stars. And this is one of the biggest uh, ties. Anyone will agree that it has been scheduled for today. Ulinzi started quite well, but now the last uh, two matches was not that merry for them. FC Leopards against Ulinzi Robinson. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, you can say, a, m a match for title contenders for this season. Mm -hmm. Uh, Leopards have shown, you know, some signs of uh, life uh, compared to last season. You know, people had, uh, fans had even ditched Leopards to the end of the season. Mm -hmm. But uh, nowadays, with the, with the new coach and, you know, 
the structures changing. You can see when Leopards is, is, Leopards is playing, even the fans come fully to support the team. Mm -hmm. But Ulinzi, you look at the last two games, I don't know what's, uh, what's happening to Matano's side because it's, it's, a, it's one of the sides that you expect to be up there, mm -hmm. you know, competing with, with the best of the teams. Mm -hmm. You look at the way they played against Posta, against Madare, mm -hmm. uh, it, it brings in a sense of, you know, things are changing in the league. Mm -hmm. You look at the way Posta played, or the way Posta played against Ulinzi, uh, the ta tactics have started changing. Mm -hmm. Some of the teams in the league, you know, are, are starting to embrace, you know, modern football. You play to, you know, um, uh, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that, sorry. You play modern football, you play in a way that uh, the fans appreciate. Mm. And, and I think that's what, what is happening. Possessive football, you'll call it. Possessive I, football. I, I don't know if you agree that this tie is... Uh, I mean, this is the tie of the weekend, mm. if, if you may say so. And I agree with him, because uh, these are two sides that uh, have the potential to win the league. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ulinzi has been disappointing. Mm. Uh, in the last two games, uh, you realize that, you know, even games they should be winning, mm. they, they, they've either lost or drawn. And uh, I, I don't think it will be easy for AFC Leopards mm -hmm. because this is uh, a side that uh, thinks they should get three points as mm -hmm. soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be hard for Leopards. It's going to be hard for Leopards. But uh, for another side, uh, that is uh, Gormaya in another uh, tie. They're playing uh, Sony Sugar. I don't know. Uh, Gormaya against Sony Sugar, your, uh, your, your team? My team is Sony Sugar, of course. I would want Sony <laughs> to win. And uh, one thing I want to say is that it's going to be a very entertaining match because mm -hmm. the way Gorma plays, the way Sony Sugar plays, mm -hmm. there is the tradition in South Nyanza where I come from, we keep the ball on the ground. That mm -hmm. is what Sony does. Mm -hmm. And I think they've perfected that act. Uh, I remember there was a time Reinhard Fabish came to Sony, mm -hmm. friendly match between Arambe Stars and Sony, and he said, this is where I've seen the ball being played mm -hmm. on the ground. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be entertaining. It mm -hmm. can go either side. It can go either yes. side. Uh, Tasca will be playing Poster Rangers. Tasca. A very, very crucial 1-0 victory against Gurmaya the other uh, time. So uh, let's wait and see. In Nairobi City stars against Sofapaka. Sofapaka actually, they are currently the last team on that log, maybe. They might get uh, to, uh, to be relegated, but it's still very, very early uh, for us to make that call. Mathari United, currently the leaders having accumulated 20 points. Uh, will be up against Muhoroni youth. So uh, different teams will be having different mentalities when it goes to uh, today's matches because all the teams want to secure victories. But just looking at how uh, the league is shaping up, you never know. Matara United have been very, very impressive. Task on the other side, Lindsay Stars. So anything can happen. Any uh, team can surprise. But that is to do with matters of uh, soccer. But now, matters to do with athletics, matters to do with wild anti-doping, matters to do with new uh, laws of the land. That is the anti-doping law. The president, uh, on, uh, uh, two days ago, he actually he signed, uh, yesterday to be specific, he signed that uh, bill and made it law. Now, officially, if you engage in matters to do with doping here in the country, there are some rules that are going to be getting you, and you just get to get some consequences on that. So take a look. Hassan Juma reports and has more details on that. Kenya had been given a one-month extension on April 7th to comply with WADA regulations or face sanctions that could include a ban from this year's Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro. The president says it's now up to the World Anti-Doping Body to give the new law a go-ahead. Even as our national leadership takes these necessary steps to compliance, I also want to urge you, our athletes and sportsmen and women, to hold themselves in the highest possible code of conduct. While the bill clears athletes' road to Brazil, it leaves on its trail a huge task of complying with provisions on medical practitioners, chemists, importers, transporters, fitness centers, and sports organizations. The new law carries with it stringent measures aimed at curbing drug abuse by athletes and sports persons in general. The law demanded by WADA will criminalize doping in a country with a history of middle and long distance running excellence, but tainted by recent doping cases. About 40 Kenyan athletes have been banned for doping the last three years. The few cases of cheating that we have encountered in the past are not a reflection on the integrity of our athletes and sportsmen and women. The ripple effect, however, will hit hard businesses dealing in medicines and will compel them to comply with its provisions. Cherengani MP Wesley Korir, a renowned marathoner who just returned from the Boston Marathon where he finished outside the podium bracket, will petition WADA to ensure that all countries are governed by the anti-doping regulation. We want to petition WADA to give each country 
their powers to formulate their own laws. Kenya had missed an April 5th deadline that was pushed to May by the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA. Ha Sanjuma, KTN Sports. Thank you, Hassan, for that piece. So, so the consequences are going to be there if you engage in matters to do with the doping and actually we're just waiting to see what World Anti-Doping Agency is going to be saying and that is on uh, May 12th in regards to Kenya compliance to uh, the regulations that uh, they did uh, set aside. But now, some other people that have a reason to smile is the Kenyan athletes and very, very impressive. Tomorrow they're going to be taking on the London Marathon. For the last 12 editions, Kenya have been able to bag gold in the, in the 10 uh, London Marathon that we've been having. But... Uh, in uh, this year's edition, we have a very, very competitive field. And the defending champion, that is Eliud Kipchoge, is going to be leading the Kenyan. That includes uh, Stanley Biwad. We also have the uh, 2014 champion, uh, uh, Kipsang, is also there. So we're saying that Kenyans might also have what it takes to go all the way and win one, two, three, four, as they did it in, in uh, last year. Also in the ladies' uh, category, the likes of Mary Kitan and Florence have said that they also have what it takes to bug gold when it comes to London Marathon that is scheduled for tomorrow. Just take a preview. Last year's Virgin London Marathon champion Eliud Kipchoge will take on, among others, 2014 champion Wilson Kipsang, marathon record holder Dennis Kimeto, and 2015 New York Marathon champion Stanley B. Watt in a fiercer field of the 2016 London Marathon, the IWF Gold Label Road Race on Sunday 2014, labeled the Clash of Champions. Got lots of experience and uh, winning this race twice, and uh, many of these guys find that I have not really won twice. And I've understood really the course very well, and uh, I'm really very positive on it. Kipchoge's winning time of uh, 2 hours 4 minutes 0.42 seconds was just outside Kipsanko's record of 2 hours 4 minutes 0.29 seconds that was set in 2014. And looking forward, the Rio Olympics medal will be theirs for Team Kenya to snatch. That's the only, above all, that's uh, the only medal I don't have in my, in my neck. And if I actually cut the position to be in the team for Rio, and get a gold medal, then I will really be more than happy. Stanley B. Watt running in London Marathon for the fourth time after finishing fourth last year, second in 2014 and eighth in 2013. Dennis Kimeto and Eliud Kipsang are likely to be the reigning champion's main challengers, with the latter two looking to make amends after dropping out of the IWF World Championship in Beijing, China last year. To me, I need to be number one <laughs> in, in London because I saw in the accreditation is one million people running this year and I'm among and, and to me, uh, my desire is to be in Olympics. On the women's front, two-time champion Mary Kay Tanya, 2015 Chicago Marathon champion Flores Kiplagat, 2013 London champion and Olympics marathon silver medalist Priska Jepto, and 2013 Rotterdam Marathon champion Jemima Sumgong will represent uh, Team Kenya. Moses Wahisi, KTN Sports. Emirates dá-lhe as boas-vindas a bordo do Estádio da Luz. O seu entusiasmo é muito importante para nós. Pedimos, por isso, a sua atenção para as instruções que se seguem. Neste estádio existem 32 portas, 65 mil adeptos e duas balizas. Este jogo terá a duração de 90 minutos com uma paragem de 15 minutos ao minuto 45. Estamos quase prontos para a entrada em campo da equipa do Benfica. Pedimos-lhe que nessa altura coloque toda a bagagem de mão aos seus pés e assegure-se que todos os aparelhos eletrónicos estão desligados para que possa concentrar-se em dar à sua equipa o apoio incondicional que ela merece. Chamamos agora a vossa atenção para as regras de utilização do cascão. Coloque o cascão sobre os ombros em sinal de benfiquismo e mantenha-o apertado durante todo o jogo. Em caso de golo, os cascóis saltam automaticamente. Coloque-o sobre a cabeça e respire normalmente. Adeptos acompanhados por crianças 
devem abraçá-las nesta altura. O jogo está prestes a começar. A Emirex agradece a vossa preferência e deseja a todos um bom jogo. Carrega bem, fica! I'd say in the past few days it has been riding on the glory. If you look at team sports like rugby, for instance, mm -hmm. when, when, when KQ is sponsoring the shirt, mm -hmm. it, it goes without saying that the shirt will be KQ. Mm -hmm. But you see, they're individual star players, like uh, um, Collins Injera, for instance. Mm -hmm. I mean, a corporate organization should take uh, advantage of that. He's now on the limelight. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll be appearing in, 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 in so many talk shows, media coverages, mm -hmm. and they need to ride on that. Mm -hmm. And do what? Brand him. Mm -hmm. Let him put on their brands, let him have uh, branded shoes. We've seen Usain Bolt immediately after Olympics, after World Atle Athletics meets, mm -hmm. he goes to Real Madrid, he goes to Manchester. Mm -hmm. But one thing that remains constant with him is Puma. Puma. So wherever he's going, he's going with Puma. So corporate organizations should also take advantage. Mm -hmm. And probably, see, when, when you identify a club side that you want to support, uh, probably there is something about that club, mm -hmm. you know, that rubs on your, your brand identity. Mm -hmm. And the onus is on you as an investor to try and make, because when you're pumping resources, those resources are supposed to make that organization succeed. Mm -hmm. Even if it means setting up structures that will ensure that the resources you're pumping in are not misused. And now maybe some corporates don't want to spend this money and they have this money. Uh, corporates have money, but you know, uh, I think character plays a big, big role when it comes to, you know, getting these sponsorship deals. Uh, you look at an example of uh, Maria Sharapova. Mm -hmm. When she was, uh, when, when, when the uh, news came out that she, she adopt, uh, she, she'd use the Beldonium, mm -hmm. we had many sponsors pull out saying, you know, we cannot be associated with a person who is into doping. Mm -hmm. Uh, an example, I think uh, Erica told us before, uh, you look at Tiger Woods, mm -hmm. when he had, uh, you know, extramarital affairs, L many sponsors, including Nike, pulled out. Mm -hmm. So I think character really plays a, a, a bigger role when it comes into this. Mm -hmm. when, when Nike came out to sponsor LeBron mm -hmm. for a lifetime, mm -hmm. you know, they, they saw that this is a person, if we are sponsoring him for a lifetime, he has a big, big impact in, 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 in basketball mm -hmm. in the world, not only in the USA, mm -hmm. but in the world. That is why you see him all over. He's a, he's a, he's a huge, you know, a huge uh, brand on himself, as, as, as he said. So when, when, when uh, some of the corporates, I think, look at the, the teams that we have in the country, mm -hmm. uh, and I will go back to football, mm -hmm. uh, why would I go to, sp to sponsor a team that, you know, after a few matches, if, if the referee will you know, probably something happens, mm -hmm. it will be chaos. And then after that, I will be the one who will be associated with chaos mm -hmm. just because something happened uh, in a football match. And, and now that, that, that's where we bring in uh, matters to do with hooliganism here in the mm -hmm. country. Because football, uh, for obvious reason, is one of the most watched sporting events, not only here in Kenya. How mm -hmm. does the negative aspect of uh, 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 maybe fans of uh, different supporters of different clubs affect uh, the attributes of if a sponsor wants to come in. Okay, uh, before we understand or unpack hooliganism, eh, mm -hmm. it's, um, I think we, we better understand where, um, how does this sponsorship work? Mm -hmm. Normally what happens, like I had indicated below, uh, before, um, sponsorships works because you want the attributes of a sport mm -hmm. to be transferred mm -hmm. to the corporate. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So basically what we are trying to say is that if I keep on associating with you, my attributes will be rubbed off uh, on you. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, uh, when people see you, most likely they'll be seeing me. Mm -hmm. And so because uh, different sports, different um, stimuli generate different kind of characteristics, mm -hmm. then you want to ask yourself, if this uh, event is associated, say, with the hooliganism, mm -hmm. what will happen to my brand? Because if I'm sponsoring a, a team, mm -hmm. if I'm sponsoring an event, mm -hmm. and the people associated with that event, with mm -hmm. that sport, mm -hmm. uh, generate uh, negative attributes, become hooligans, 
definitely that kind of image will be transferred to my brand. And now that's when we, we now talk about the subconscious image transfer. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of fans will be there cheering, a lot of fans will be there just enjoying the different matches. But what they see, what the other maybe organization have placed maybe on the banner, on the posts, on the wall, at, at some time it just sticks to our mind and maybe even will influence us in buying an item. Just, I enjoy watching this because it's those moments that maybe a goal has been scored, those moments, the jovial moments in a sporting moment. Take a look. There is product placement, there is just a boy advertising on billboards, advertisements on uh, these rally cars. Are we going to be able to get on that level in the Kenyan market as we wind up? I think we, we are getting there because if you look at the Kenyan market, I think there are lots and lots of brands that are coming into the Kenyan market. And that makes it uh, you know, very easy for brands to start that competition and to look beyond the traditional marketing strategies. Mm -hmm. And probably marketing and advertising executives will have to think outside the box and start thinking of how to tap on you know, the, 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 the attributes of different sports sites, uh, different athletes, mm -hmm. and rub it on their brands. Yeah, indeed, uh, you realize that the market environment, the marketplace, mm -hmm. is quite competitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, we require smart uh, marketing executives to come up with uh, uh, differentiation, mm -hmm. um, uh, if you like, uh, activities like supporting sports, mm -hmm. so that uh, they can be able to stand out in the market. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether we like it or not, that's the, that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. But what I'll say, the person who will be able to start it early mm -hmm. will be the one who will uh, fetch the gold as it were. Because mm -hmm. it's a treasure trove if you like that has not been tapped has not been tapped okay uh, I, I think we are headed in the right direction only the, the, the only you know our major undoing as I said earlier is character and you know if, if we get ourselves in the, in the in the right place you know change some of, of the things that are happening mm -hmm. in in our sports in the country then probably we'll have more corporates you know getting into sports mm -hmm. Just very, very short, what should teams do and what should corporates do so as to have this unit in uh, matters to do with sports uh, sponsorship? Corporates need to come up with policies mm -hmm. and they need to identify the actual sport mm -hmm. that will support their bidding mm -hmm. because you cannot uh, sponsor just any sport. Mm -hmm. Teams also need to put their houses in order, mm -hmm. house system, be organized, because they'll be working with an organized corporate, mm -hmm. and corporate want to work with an organized team. Mm -hmm. So basically the teams, they, they really have to refine themselves, they have to be polished, mm -hmm. so that they can also be able to get uh, access into these coffers from the corporates. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very, very impressive. A lot needs to be done, a lot can be done. The market is there, shares are there, so it's how well are we going to be utilizing what we have so as to build this sports sponsorship. And teams actually, they also need to prove the, what they're worth so that if a corporate comes in and uh, maybe it pump in some money, they also get uh, the worth that they deserve. And with that, we're going to wind up at this edition of KTN Scoreline. My name is Moses Wahisi. Have a lovely afternoon.